G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith, I'm Darren and today I have a super quick tutorial on how you can custom design a checkerboard or chessboard in just a matter of minutes. Now to do this we'll be utilizing Lightburn software which is my laser engraving software of choice and it's super useful for creating your own custom laser engraving designs. Now the tool that we'll mainly be using today is the Grid Array tool and we briefly touched on it last week but there's a sneaky little slider that you may not know about and that's going to make this whole design super easy, super quick and super accurate and I know you're going to love it. So let's jump straight in and get started. Okay so the first thing that we need to do is grab our square tool which is over on the left hand side here and we're going to click on that one and we're going to shift and drag which will make us a square each time and for this one this design let's it can be any size that you want but let's make it 30 mils by 30 millimeters and um, that's just a little bit over an inch. So that's the basis of our uh, the starting point of our checkerboard and what we need to do is repeat this pattern across the uh, rows and we need to do that on columns as well so it's an 8 by 8 design so what we're going to do is we're going to use the grid array tool okay and what we're going to do is the main thing here is this spacing in the middle so in this case we want that 30 millimeters which is the same size as the square that we've got so we're just going to offset that and we need four of those and now on the Y, on the um, vertical, we're going to need eight rows. But here's the little slider trick that uh, you may not be aware of. And it's this little one here, which is called shift by half. Okay, so if I don't, if I've got that one turned off and I just add the rows, it's just adding those directly underneath. Okay, but if we go back, and we turn that one on and we shift by half every time I add a row it's offset that and it's creating this pattern exactly like what we need for a checkerboard so we've now got our 8 by 8 we click OK and I'm just going to put a border around that one as well so I'm back to my square and now if you see there that I mouse over the corner of this top square it becomes this uh, target which means it's locked on to that or snapping to that corner. So I can just click and drag all the way to the other corner. Now you might have seen that reversed. I'm just going to pop that on a different layer. So that's going to be on layer one and it's, and it's reverted back. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do all this shading of the black. And then the next layer is going to be just a line, just so as it gives us the boundary. And from there, all I need to do is uh, create an offset of that one for my cut. And to do that offset, I just click on the offset shapes here. And we can do that whatever we want. And now in this case, it's 10 millimeters. Let's say, let's make it 20 millimeters. Okay, so there we have um, in an outward direction, we click OK. I'm going to chuck that onto a different layer, and that's going to be my cut layer. So in... I don't know, was that under two minutes? I reckon that was under two minutes. There's a super quick and easy uh, checkerboard design. Now that in itself is, it looks good and it's nice and quick and it's super accurate. But uh, let's might, we might want to spice this up a little bit and make these a little bit more custom. All right, so to do that, we're just going to delete all of this again and we're going to start from the beginning. So we're going to need our square, like we said. So I'm just holding down shift and I'm going to pop that on the fill layer and we're going to make that one 30 millimeters. Okay, so that's 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Now anything can really be the design inspiration for this and it doesn't have to be uh, what I'm about to show you. But uh, this was just something I thought, ah, oh, well, you know, it kind of ties in with the theme of it and that medieval type sort of uh, gameplay that you might get in chess or checkers because obviously it's a very old game. So I'll just go into here and I'll pull in, pull in this design here, which is just a uh, Celtic design. And if we just zoom in on that one, we can kind of see that it's just this nice sort of pattern. Now I've got that off the internet and I'll show you exactly how we've, how we've done that one. If we jump over to the internet here. So I've just gone into uh, Google and I've searched for Celtic designs and we get all of these ones up here in Etsy and things like that. And you know, if you find a design that you like and uh, you you plan on doing this 
um, on a more commercial type basis where you might be selling these uh, checkerboards or chessboards, then I would definitely encourage you to purchase those designs rather than just copy them directly off. But I'm just going to show you for the purpose of this example how you can actually do that. So um, I can't remember where I saw it. one. It was this, this one here in free pick and I thought that looks pretty cool. So I went to the website for uh, free pick and I on a and I established that this is a premium one, which I'm not going to worry too much about it. But if I if I scroll through here, I can see here that this one uh, was a free license, saying attribution is required, but I'm not selling this file or anything like that. So uh, it's purely just for the purpose of the example. So all I've done is with this particular image, I've right clicked on that one and I just copy the image and I go into Lightburn and I paste the image. Now it's quite large as you can see there. And then I'm gonna right click on that and trace the image. And it brings up a, uh, a dialog box showing what that trace is gonna look like. And in this case, we use this design here. So I can just click and drag my box over that design only, and that's all it's going to trace. And we've covered that in previous tutorials. But uh, so if I click on that one, and I can delete that image now, and there we have that design. So once you've actually got that design, then you can size it to whatever ever you like. And you know, as we've covered in previous uh, tutorials as well about creating your own art libraries, you might just want to pop this one in wherever it might be. Um, you know, in this case, I've just put it under tutorials because I just chucked it in there, so I know where it was. But this is a great way to start building your own art libraries that you can reuse time and time again. Okay, so we have that design. And all I'm going to do is with this design and I highlight the box, uh, the square beside it. And with this uh, toolbar up the top, as you can see up here, we've got this bullseye sort of target, which will just basically center them together. Okay, so that then creates a little bit of a nicer sort of design. So I'm going to just group that and we're going to repeat that process. We're going to do four across, two, three, four, and we're going to do eight down. Okay, so now as you can see there, we've just created something that has a is far more visually interesting perhaps than just the standard black and white. So Think about how you might be able to utilize that. What sort of designs that might inspire you? Now, it might be for a, um, a, a dog lover. You might have a dog's face on there or something like that, or a cat lover, or might be a someone that loves plants. Uh, anything like that. Any You can draw your inspiration from anything there, and this really certainly opens it up to a number of different um, avenues that you can start to personalize these products and make them really uh, appealing to a, a much more refined audience perhaps and uh, certainly if I saw something like this as opposed to a just a standard design uh, black and white I my eye would be drawn to this instantly because of that repeating pattern and it's quite a pleasant pattern and again we just repeat the process we pop the border around the outside which we're going to pop onto a um, a different layer so that's going to just be a, a marker and then we're just going to offset that one 20 mil, mil will be fine which is going to be our cut line I'm going to pop that on a separate layer and there we have a, uh, a much more visually appealing design than the standard black and white so once you've actually got that design, you could, you've got this space in between here that's uh, between the cut line that you could add additional customization to. So whether it be text or whether it be other images or, or, or anything like that, it could be a nice sort of Celtic uh, border that goes around the outside or, or whatever the inspiration that has drawn you to, uh, to create something like this. But I think it certainly adds a certain flair to the design and it's super easy to do as you've seen it's just using that sneaky little shift by half function which then gives us this offset pattern and makes it super easy super accurate like I said in the introduction so here we have those two designs side by side We've got our plain one on the left and our, and our custom design on the right. Now, if I saw these at a market somewhere, I know that my eyes would be drawn to the custom design over here. 
And uh, that might be a way that you can start to differentiate with some of your product designs if you're, if you're doing it for that sort of thing, or whether it's just for personalized gifts. And um, think about this from a perspective of a corporate uh, client, perhaps, if, you, if you're doing this to you know, make a bit of money on the side, then uh, this might be something, let's say it's a real estate uh, they might have a nice simple logo design that you could put on a checkerboard like this that you could mark up and, and custom design, have a custom message here from the real estate to their first home buyers or their new home buyers. Uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. So hopefully you've drawn some inspiration from that and you'll understand how you can utilize the tools within Lightburn to start creating a bunch of different designs that uh, they don't have to be complex. They can be pretty simple and uh, you can see how quickly we can put things together. So until the next video, as I always say, be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.